Hello artists. My name is Miss Valerie. I am the Alpi art teacher for Spring Hill 4th grade, Lafayette Elementary 5th grade, and Burton Valley 4th and 5th grade. And today we are going to do an art project inspired by the artist Yayoi Kusama, sometimes referred to as the princess of polka dots. While growing up in Japan, Yayoi had a dream that a field of flowers was talking to her. And in this dream, all the flowers in the field looked like they were a bunch of dots. And she felt like she was, as she was in this field with all these dots, that she was kind of becoming the dots, almost camouflaged. And this sparked a lot of her artwork, her sculptures and paintings, some of which we are going to see today. Yayoi created a ton of installations that were called infinity mirrors that people could walk through and experience, some of them with lights, all of them with mirrors. And the mirrors would reflect, of course, the dots that were everywhere. Sometimes she'd use limited color, sometimes bright, as you can see in the pictures here. And those would make it look like that field of flowers that goes on and on. You can't tell where one thing stops and one thing begins. Begins. Okay, here we have some more installation pieces, and that means artwork that is installed in a room that people, generally people can walk through or experience, and it's not just standing alone. The bottom one reminds me of Super Mario Brothers, and check that out, somebody got to throw the dot ball in the air. At the top you can see Yayoi wearing a polka dot dress. She did tend to have a lot of pictures with her dressed in the same pattern of the artwork that she was standing in front of. Here she is in front of a very large spotted pumpkin. So of course dots. Pumpkins were another popular theme that she liked to explore. In these paintings, Yayoi's dots have turned into these things that look kind of like, I think, amoeba or cells. And this is more of what we're going to base our project on today. There's a lot of bright color. Most of those cell or amoeba shapes are touching each other. A lot of them have borders, tons of pattern. Some of the artwork has frames. We are going to be adding that today. Woohoo! It is art making time. Time to get your supplies. You're going to need paper, a pencil, paint and paintbrush or markers, although you won't need that right away, and a parent approved art making area. Really make sure it is parent approved, especially if you are painting. All right, let's get started. Okay, I have my piece of paper here. If you're painting, you're gonna wanna have a heavy enough weight paper, meaning it's a little bit thicker so the paint doesn't disintegrate it. Um, but if you're just using markers, you can use regular printer paper. And we're first gonna start with kind of creating a frame. And we've seen a lot of frames which have straight lines, but using Yayoi's technique, we're gonna add some maybe some zigzags. You can go all the way around. We can overlap. You don't have to be super perfect at all. I have my zigzags, my frame, and now I'm going to start on the inside. Now we saw a lot of those amoeba shapes. I'm going to start with making those freeform shapes. There's not really any squares, they're more blobby. And I'm leaving a little bit of room because I know I might put some borders on some of them, but they're pretty close together. And I wanna make sure that I put different sizes in. At some point I can do some bigger ones. I might add some more later. Just really filling in. The whole space. So now I have quite enough in there 
and I'm gonna start adding in some borders. And I'm using mostly like circles and might have a couple more zigzags inside here, borders and bumps. I'm gonna add borders on some of them. Maybe some zigzags on the outside. Remember I want a lot of them to touch. And since this one's so close, I might have an inside border on this one. I didn't really have room. On this guy, maybe I wanna do some bumps. That little blob. Maybe I'll have an inside border as well. And I'm gonna go through and do that to all of them. And I'm gonna add in something patterned on the inside. Now they can be circles. Just other kinds of blobs. The little lines. Like little hot dog shapes. I guess they're not all hot dogs. I might repeat those in a couple different spots, maybe not near each other. So that it kind of goes all together. We're gonna do those circly shapes again. And we'll just have some dots in another one. Well, it looks like most of them, oh, forgot those, have patterns inside them. You can add them out here too if you want. Up to you. But I see there's some empty spots and I don't have to totally fill it, but I think just a couple of them I might, I think here and here. And I could just make a smaller shape. I notice I don't really have any other smaller shapes doing the same thing that I did with these. You have a border you can do zigzags if you want to do bumps or some other lines, you can do that. I was just doing it in the style of Yayoi. And then you're going to have those freeform shapes of different sizes with patterns inside. There can also be zigzags or bumps on the outside or on the inside. And filling most of the area, giving yourself a lot of places to add color. I have an example of one I did. It took a long time if you wanted to do a bigger one. Got a lot on it. It's a big, long one. So you might wanna do something even bigger. All right, now I'm gonna go get my paints. Okay, I have my paints. I have my self-approved art making space. A little bit of water, not too much. I have a couple brushes. Again, if you only have markers, you can use those instead. And I am going to start painting. Remember when you're painting, you want to probably not start on the outside because then you might end up getting it, your hand right in it. And then you can choose what kind of colors you want to use. I like to start in the inside. And as you saw from Yayoi's, artwork, she made really bright colors. Maybe you only want to use dark colors, but still be able to see all of the draw. Okay, so I went ahead and painted green in lots of different places. Um, if you're using watercolor or you're using a lot of water with your paint, you know, you do want to make sure that you don't paint right next to another wet spot because it'll bleed, meaning it'll kind of go into the other paint. So I'm gonna move on to another color. I'm gonna pick orange. And I'm gonna go through and do just what I did with the green. Some of them might be on the borders. Some of them might be detail on the inside. If it's really little tiny detail, you might wanna to wait to do that. Like I'm gonna to wait to do those dots at the end. Some of it you might end up adding with pen I've got a bunch of orange in. This doesn't mean I can't add some more later, but laying down my colors. We'll move on to another color. Mm, I think I might do turquoise if I have it. And I'm gonna do the same thing with that. 
Remember, if you're using watercolor, you can add a little bit more water to make a tint or make it lighter. If you can also do that adding white. Okay, I've added a lot of uh, turquoise and I did notice that when it's next to the green, it doesn't stand out as much. They kind of, it's hard to tell them apart versus when the turquoise is next to the orange, I can see each of them clearly. So I really wanna pay attention to either making the blue lighter if it's gonna go next to the green, so we can see the green stand out, um, or put it next to a lighter color. I see I have a lot of darker colors. I think I wanna look for a light color. I think I'll go with yellow. Oh, I think I might use that for the background. So if I'm gonna do that, I have to think about if it's touching the outside, if I was gonna do the background yellow, then anything on the outside could not be yellow. Yeah, I added in that yellow background. Now I can see where I can and can't add yellow. So anything that's touching the outside, it's just gonna be camouflage. And I definitely am gonna to have to do this outer rim a different color. So anywhere that's not touching, so I could do this rim a different color on the dots after I'm done. I could do in here. I can do in here. So there are a lot of choices. I'm gonna go and find all those places I'm gonna add. Yeah, for my final color, which I think I'm gonna use magenta, which is a form of pink. And I think I'm gonna make it lighter and darker. Oh, it looks like I'm gonna have to have two different colors there. Um, depending on what's there, I might wanna have it lighter, darker. I could add a color on the outside that I've already used as well. Get all the, where I have to be kind of careful bits done first, and then I can easily go back and fill in. Okay, so I added color to all the different parts. I even went back and added some extra dots on some paint that had dried with using the colors I had here. You can also take Sharpie like maybe a thin Sharpie or other pen when it's dry, something that um, can go over watercolor if it's still a little wet or if you just wait till it's dry. Um, and you can go over and add some outlines or more details and lines. If you were going to do another option, I also used cardboard as my base and added paint and some Sharpie.